Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, going back into another Rumble Challenge. Now at first, I was just going to run the Thorn because I wanted to give it one final test before the Rise of Iron. I wanted to just see just how it kept up with a lot of the other guns. And honestly, I just wanted to use it because it's pretty damn fun to use. Now once I got into the game, I found out that my HUD was turned off back from before when I was doing a previous video. And I just figured, hey, why not just keep it off and see how I do anyways. So let's just see how great this Thorn is. Even while the HUD is turned off, I want to see if I can win this game. Now it is a pretty amazing gameplay. I'm running the Thorn and a Party Crasher, although I do keep it mostly with Thorn as I didn't ever get the chance to pick up special ammo, as not playing with HUD really threw me off. This was actually the first time never playing with the HUD in the Crucible. I've used it in PvE, turned it off a few times here and there, just to take some screenshots and everything just kind of looks a lot nicer and cleaner without the HUD on. But this is the first time I've ever actually never had HUD on in the Crucible. Now before we get too far into this gameplay guys, I just want to let you know if you guys see me messing up with this blink a lot or just blinking in the walls or something crazy like that, I actually just started using blink for the first time yesterday. I was in Trials of Osiris and one of my friends finally talked me into it and just told me, hey man, you gotta run blink. Like it's like the best perk in the game when you're jumping around, especially on Pantheon. So I took his word for it and I actually got used to blink finally. This, it's kind of hard to believe that I've never really used it. Every time I tried to use it, I was just like, wow, this is kind of stupid. And I literally had only used it for about one game, and then I would just turn it off because I was getting tired of like missing jumps or just blinking into deaths or something like that. So I actually never really got used to it. But last night, while I was playing some Pantheon, I was on for about five hours just doing carries and stuff, and I finally did get used to Blink. And let me tell you guys, this Blink is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to test it out on the Hunter. And honestly, who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to Blink on Titans. Back in, Maybe in Destiny 2, they'll add Blink to the Titan class. And then the game will be broken again, you know? It'll be pretty fun. I just, honestly, I can't believe I waited this long to use Blink. And once I finally got used to it, I, I it's really a game changer. Blink is absolutely insane. But I just do want you guys to know, if you see me blinking into walls or just blinking into really weird places or something like that, that is the reason why. I'm still kind of getting used to it, but I do definitely like it so far. Now another thing that I do want to talk about in this game is the damn spawn killing, man. The Cauldron is somehow the biggest spawn killing map in this game especially when you're playing Rumble. If you're going to see in this gameplay, I die like five times from spawn deaths almost in a row every single time. Now, it might have been a little different if I had the HUD on, I'm not going to lie. The radar probably would have helped me a little bit here and there. But honestly, the spawn killing on this map and in Rumble in general is really getting ridiculous. And I don't know if there's really anything they can do to fix it, but it would be nice if you had infinite health for maybe even just like a half a second out of your spawn. I know that could cause problems, but I don't know. There's got to be something they can do about it, honestly. It's just... It's a little out of control. You'll see later in the gameplay what I'm talking about. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about if you've played this map in Rumble. Now also keep in mind guys, next weekend will be the last Trials of Osiris for the PlayStation 4 until September 30th. So once the Rise of Iron comes out on September 20th, we'll have that first weekend where we won't have any Trials of Osiris or anything like that. But then the next weekend right after that, it will come back live just at the same time and everything. But there will be about three weeks with no Trials of Osiris. So for all those people that still need to complete their moments of triumph or really just get their raids done finally or just don't even want to play at all because trials is down, unfortunately it won't be up for the next two to three weeks. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing. I might just go play some zombies. I know there's a new zombie map coming out on the 6th. So honestly, I might just play some zombies instead. But if you guys do like some zombie gameplay, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to live stream the new map or even just upload some guides maybe on how to do the pack punch or just how to like stay alive to, to high rounds maybe. Just let me know if you guys want to see anything like that. I do enjoy a lot of zombies, and I used to play it like crazy back in Black Ops 2. I am pretty hyped for the last installment of the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies, and I really can't wait for that to come out on September 6th. Also, the Battlefield 1 beta is now live as well, and I do have a live stream of that. If you didn't see that, Battlefield 1 is quite fun, and the beta should be live for everyone sometime tomorrow, just depending on when you're watching this video, but it should be up tomorrow on August 31st, I believe. So yeah, if you haven't gotten into that either, you can definitely start downloading that sometime August 31st. And I'm not too sure when that ends, but I believe it will be going throughout the weekend as well. Now if you did sign up for the Battlefield 1 beta on the website before August 20th, you can actually go check your email right now today, and you should have a beta key in there. But if you did not sign up for the email, don't worry, it should be coming out sometime tomorrow for everybody else. And you're not really missing out on too much, just about one day head start. But you should be coming in tomorrow at some time, so if you haven't tested that out guys, I would suggest you at least test it out. It is quite fun, and you can actually ride on horseback. There's only one map right now in two game modes, so it's get, it can get boring a little quickly if you've never played Battlefield before. 
but I definitely like it a lot. It just reminded me a lot of the classic Battlefields, like Battlefield Bad Company 1, and it's definitely a big change from Hardline and even Battlefield 4. It seemed pretty cool, and it's the first game in a while that I've played with a World War II setting, so I wasn't really even used to using old weapons like the Dewar or like M1 carbines and stuff like that. It actually started to remind me a lot of Call of Duty World at War, which is probably why I enjoyed it as much as I did. But anyways guys, back to this gameplay, this thorn is just tears straight through people. Now unfortunately we can't see how much damage it does, or really the burn damages either, but it is pretty nice, especially if your HUD is turned on. It'll actually, you can use the burning damage at to your advantage if you need to, because it'll track people for about 5 or 6 seconds and just keep burning them. So if they start running away or something like that, they'll either burn out or you can just track them and know where they're at to finish them off. So this thorn is really sick, and if you don't have it yet, you can still get it out of the Legacy Primary Engrams. I do remember back in year one, it was way harder to get. That Thorn Quest literally took me about three months, and that last step on it was unbelievable trying to beat that solo. And I finally ended up getting help from a couple friends to finish that up. That quest was incredible. So for all you year two players out there, you are quite lucky. This thing is way easier to get than it used to be, and I do enjoy using this weapon quite a lot. I don't know what it is about it, but it seems to be like this thing is almost like a sniper rifle. Like the range on it is incredible. And I see myself hitting shots way easier, like the Hawkmoon has quite a crazy range on it as well, don't get me wrong, but for some reason this Thorn is way more consistent. If light advantages are turned off, it is honestly a little bit better in the Hawkmoon in my opinion. The lucky rounds can make the Hawkmoon a two-shot kill, so I mean if you're lucky enough, it will technically be better than the Thorn, but in my opinion, I would still choose the Thorn over the Hawkmoon any day. I land way more shots at this thing, and especially at far ranges, I don't see myself missing at all. Like, I can hit somebody just about at sniper range, and there was even plenty of times back in year one where I would beat out snipers with this thing, because it is just ridiculous. The sight on it is like my favorite sight on any hand cannon, and for, the recoil is awesome too. Like, the recoil just helps me aim better for some reason, and so long as you get used to this weapon, you will have quite a good time when using it, because it's just so much fun watching these people burn out. And it's not as crazy as it used to be. I know in year one, you could like two shot somebody and the burn would finish them off, and it was it was way too overpowered back in the day. But it is quite balanced now, but it's still a little bit overpowered in my opinion, just because of the fact that it is better than the Hawk Moon. In certain situations, I mean you do have to be good with it, don't get me wrong, but this thorn is quite good, and I would the only one that I could say is better than it is the last word, and that's only if you're standing within really close proximity to somebody. So overall, I've got to say the Thorn is like the best exotic hand cannon in the game, but that's just my opinion, guys, so a lot of people may think otherwise. Now, for the best thing about this Thorn, though, really is the fact that anytime that you're in a lobby, if you're the only one running Thorn, immediately once you get like two or three kills on somebody, they'll immediately just pull it out. They'll be like, oh, Thorn? What is this? No, what's going on? Let me get my Thorn out. No way. It, like, it must be something back from Jure 1. Like, in year 1, everybody ran Thorn. Like, you would get in a lobby, and if one person had the Thorn, it was it. It would be like, alright, well, now everyone has to run it, because nothing's going to beat out the Thorn. But for some reason, it still happens. Like, the people still get so salty about dying from the Thorn, that one or two kills with the Thorn will immediately cause the rest of the team to just pull their Thorns out. It's pretty damn funny. It's almost like a hidden exotic perk on this thing. It's like, well, kills with Thorn causes other people to get kills with Thorn. It's just... It's honestly pretty great, but I don't know if that's something that year two players do, but any type of year one player, if they die from the thorn enough times, they will immediately just get their thorn out. They'll just be like, alright, no, 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 get me, get the thorn, get the thorn, there's no way. It's pretty damn funny. Now this game was actually extremely close, I don't think it would have been as close if I had my HUD on though, because I did get a, quite a few spawn deaths that I do feel like I could have won if it wasn't for the fact that I couldn't see them on my radar, but I did win 25-25 to 24-90. So I basically got really lucky here, guys. I'm not going to say I outplayed anybody here. If I did have my HUD on, I'm sure it would have been a little bit easier. But overall, I hope you guys did enjoy this gameplay. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below. Let me know any more challenges and stuff you guys want me to do down in the comments. I'm thinking about doing the double shotguns next, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.